What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode, potentially the most epic podcast in HyperChange history. Little bit rattled here. We've got Jay Filchi um, coming back for our weekly Sunday Tesla scheme sesh. And we have a bottle of champagne here because uh, there's been some rumors floating around on Twitter. Um, we may be ordering the HyperChange Tesla literally right now on this podcast. Unbelievably pumped made the basically spur of the moment epic whim decision. What if I need to get to battery day? I don't want to deal with flying. Like, how do I not have a Tesla? How does HyperChange not have a Tesla? Shouldn't I be making an FSD video? Shouldn't I be recording every this podcast from inside my Tesla? Like, what am I doing? Like, living in 2020 without, I don't know. Any little overwhelmed right now, um, as you guys can tell. But we got the champagne. We're ready to pop it. Um, have been thinking about what I want to order. Um, I'm probably going to have to sell a little bit of Tesla stock to make this happen. So that's probably, I'm going to have to do it on Monday. We're recording this on Sunday right now. A little, that is a whole bittersweet, just, I thought I would never sell my Tesla stock. And so now I'm going to sell basically like 10% of my position to pull this off, which is super bittersweet because I love Tesla. I love the investment. Nothing has changed about my thoughts on the company. And of course, nothing in the show is ever financial advice. Um, but just, and I honestly am like, Elon, I hope you're not mad. Martin, like that. I just like, part of me feels bad because like, I'm not, I love being a Tesla shareholder. I've been a Tesla shareholder for years. I'm still a Tesla shareholder. I still have the 90% of my investment. I still plan on holding for decades to come. Um, but I'm just not rich. And this, I put all, I poured every single dollar I made for the past two years for my YouTube channel into buying Tesla stock hand over fist. That's ended up working up super well. Um, and yeah, so <laughs> And yeah, that has worked out super duper, like, and it worked out. And now I have like my test. I haven't sold a single share. It's way up. So I'm planning to take a little bit off the table and I would never sell it for literally anything in the world except to actually buy like the product that I'm in love with. That is the whole reason I dedicate my life to test on this YouTube channel, electric vehicles that are going to change the world, owning a spaceship, owning a computer on wheels, owning a Tesla is like one of my biggest life goals. And honestly, like this whole sort of come up moment of hyper change just starting a YouTube channel, hitting 100,000 subs, like this being my full-time job, like it's almost too good to be true. And I feel like it really hasn't like sunk in or hit home Tesla stock going up 10X. And to just this feeling of like, actually I'm gonna have my own Tesla is like finally making it all real. And so I think this is one of the craziest, like I'm just so excited. And I wanted to bring you all along with me because the dopest part about all this is the car that we're about to order. The hyper ship is what I think I'm going to call it is really something for the community. It's for hyper change. It's so I can make videos. It's so I can whip around, do cooler projects, like really go all out and make the best content for you guys. And like, you're going to come along with me and get the car. And so it's just really like uh, a, a great moment for the hyper change community. So anyway, all right. Okay, tensions are running high, bro. We're, there's a lot of excitement right now. This is literally, I think, the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life times 100x. Order of magnitude. Like an, or, an order of, easily, an order of magnitude, the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life. Um, so I'm a little bit rattled, but I mean, we're going to talk about why I think this is an amazing time to buy a car. Why? It, it, anyway. One more thing that I think is interesting to add just in, in, in terms of timing, it's like, it's so cool to see FSD like city streets is starting to creep out. Like just earlier this week, we saw the speed sign reading that timing arbitrage, missing out on being on the forefront of that just to wait for a cyber truck seems a little bit silly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So why, so for those of you who know, I, the Tesla I have on order with the bold, uh, you know, powerful commitment of a hundred dollar fully re refundable deposit. I ordered my cyber truck, um, you know, a couple months ago cause I just loved it. Honestly, like it looks so badass. It's the future. Um, the way they're designing it with the exoskeleton, it's rugged. And honestly, like the cyber truck to me represented a huge moment in automotive history and the way that like the the soul the back came over and had a solar panel built into the roof which now that i'm thinking about it as i'm saying it out loud like isn't that cool of a feature but that feature alone is like so dope because elon musk has said for so long they weren't gonna have solar panels in the roof but then the cyber truck will um and I, I don't know the cyber truck is way more badass and and cool looking than the model y but it doesn't exist like if i had the choice i'd get a cyber truck but i don't so i think i'm gonna get the model y and pay, maybe trade it in for a cyber truck in like two years or something i don't know we'll see um but the model y in many ways, you know, every Tesla is a piece of Tesla history. The Model Y poised to be like the best-selling Tesla outsell the Model 3 SX combined. Um, I think in a lot of ways, it checks the boxes of like practicality. Like 
it like compared with like what you get for the product like you know i'm not i don't want to get performance i want to get long range i'm gonna get a super long range ev a ton of space i'm planning on getting the bed so i can like sleep in it and camp in it so the model 3 was like a little too small like it just felt for like the price of a model 3 even though i think the model 3 drives a lot better um, like it's a little bit smaller and tighter and faster and like I'm honestly not that good at driving like I'm a slow grandma driver I'm horrible at driving and so smaller makes it harder to uh, crash or easier to get into small streets so like I like that but even with that the Model Y a little poofed out but just for that little poof out you get so much more space um, like I really feel like I could camp in my Model Y I could drive around for my homies like it's just going to be the perfect sort of practical car a ton more cubic store I think it's like 15 cubic feet of storage in the Model 3 versus 66 in the Model Y. Like, it's just actually a huge difference in terms of, like, practicality. And, yeah, the Model 3 is a little bit faster, but, like, do I need to go faster? Like, I I'm going to be on chill mode the whole time anyway. And this whole point of, like, being on the front lines, like, okay, I'm an investor in Tesla. What do I preach is the number one rule of your investment. Be the customer. Experience the product. FSD, raising prices, expanding their functionality, city streets, this autopilot maturing into full self-driving is probably you know, the biggest thing happening right now in technology and software for Tesla, for the thesis, for the company, like to be on the forefront of this, you have to own the product to watch it. And so if my full-time job is to make YouTube videos, to study Tesla, to know the most about Tesla and be informed about my investment in the company and just the electric vehicle and autonomous vehicle space and even artificial intelligence space, then I need to have this product and watch the updates come out. Like this is a priceless moment in history where it's like the three to whatever year window of where cars go fully autonomous. And now we're about to watch that. I might buy my Tesla Model Y and start driving it. And then by the time I get rid of my Tesla Model Y, I'm not even driving it anymore because it's autonomous. Like that's the this, this crazy like generational leap in the technology that we get a witness now. And so I wanna be on the front lines of that. That's a huge reason why I'm making this purchase. I can't wait to share it with you um, and just sort of experience and watch this evolve together because you can talk about it all you want. You can be in your friend's Tesla all they want and listen to them talk about it, but there's no way to know about FSD than to actually be in your Tesla, use it every day, watch it get better with each update. The other thing is so fascinating is this is probably one of the biggest uh, examples of where humans are giving up trust to the artificial intelligence algorithm. Like, you know, what you watch on YouTube, maybe just determined by the AI, what tweet you're going to read, Twitter's going to show you, Facebook's going to push you some sort of content based on the AI. Well, now we're, you know, instead of what just content to view, instead of the decision of human, turn this, do the wheel like this, do the brake like that, we're giving up all of those micro decisions to the AI. That's a huge sort of step in the hyper change of society of g humans giving up these sort of mundane, stressful, you know, tasks to these computers that can actually do them way better. And you think about traffic being one of the leading causes of death. I think it's like 350 deaths per day um, on average in the US from highways, not to mention how many injuries happen. Um, just so much money, the cost to the healthcare system, the emotional cost to families because the vehicles aren't as safe as they should be. Um, that's the other huge and extremely exciting thing that FSD is going to bring on is this new era of just massive more safety in the roads and transportation systems. So in, all in all, I think one of, it's one of the most amazing technological moments to have the, the when Apple made the phone into a computer, Tesla's making the car into a computer and to really like it's almost like we haven't seen Tesla launch the app store yet because they haven't hit autonomy. And once they hit autonomy, the app store launches, and that's when this like aha moment happens. Huge reason to own it now. You own the Cybertruck for you wait for the Cybertruck for two years, you're missing out um, on a lot of that development. Where is Hyperchange's mind at in terms of buying the Tesla as an investment? Like, how much do you actually give give credit to the the possibility that this car could appreciate if FSD goes right? So I mean, we've been seeing some insane data about the used car prices of Teslas. Teslas retain their value way better than any other vehicle. And I think a huge part of that is because they have software that updates over the air and they're electric. People just really want electric vehicles. And Tesla makes an amazing product that people don't want to get rid of that doesn't lose value over time. So Tesla is actually debunking this entire myth of the automotive industry that you buy this massive asset that's a horrible investment that immediately loses like 10 grand when you drive it off the lot. Tesla is totally changing the paradigm of that norm. And I actually think buying a Tesla right now is a weird financial arbitrage of where they have uh, delivered a massive amount of functionality and rapid improvements for autopilot. They're only charging 8,000 up from like 6,000 a couple months ago, but this thing is getting be better crazy fast. And if I lock in full self-driving for $8,000 and that sticks with the vehicle, this is how I think it works. And the car, the price of FSD is 20 grand. When I'm going to flip it for my Cybertruck, all of a sudden there's a 12 grand appreciation in the FSD value to offset the hardware value decrease 
in this vehicle, almost an unprecedented time where a vehicle's actually not a bad investment. And so that's another big, you know, sort of thought process about me buying this Tesla is like, if it were any other car, am I thinking about buying any other car, about buying any other electric car? No, not even, like, it's not even in the conversation at all. Um, I'm only thinking about buying a Tesla because they have full, full self-driving. I can watch that happen. They have supercharging. So that's actually just making it practical to be able to drive to battery day, investor day, let's say. That's like, I have to supercharge. There's no other electric car that would actually be able to get me the battery day. So what's crazy about the Tesla is I actually think it might not be decreasing in price that much. Like I think as an investment, I don't think I'm going to make a ton of money like buying my, my Model Y and selling it in a year, but I think it might not actually lose a ton of value. And that gives me a lot of peace of mind um, for making a huge, huge purchase like this. And I really think Tesla, the data is coming out. It's taking the industry because this is so too good to be true. It's like breaking every single norm about how cars depreciate. The industry is just flat out in denial that this is actually the case. And I think as more and more data keeps coming out, this whole notion that cars dramatically lose value over time and this narrative that Elon's been pushing that nobody, including myself, believes that cars could be an appreciating asset once FSD is turned on. What if that happens? And what if they do turn on FSD in two years and it is worth 100K per car and I just bought it for eight grand. I think that's going to offset, you know, a 20K decrease in the hardware price of my Model Y. So I, if I had to make a prediction, like my gut down, deep down is telling me that the FSD price increase, I think there's a 50-50 chance that it more than offsets any decreases in the hardware value of the vehicle. And I actually potentially break even or make money on this Model Y when I trade it in for a Cybertruck in a year. And would you have yeah. any comments on that, Julian? Because you're a car guy. so you A shout out Clean Technica, you all put out, um, an article over the last couple of days that just compared like Model 3 over three years to a bunch of other ICE cars. And it's like 10% depreciation to, versus a median of like 45% depreciation. And it just it kind of goes through the whole TCO conversation. It's like, how much is the cost of actually owning this car for this one to two year period? Ooh, well, because that's a great point, too, is when you buy your Model Y, I'm almost paying because it's way cheaper to charge than an internal combustion engine car. Like, it's almost like I paid for more of it up front. And that, like, razor blade cost every time I want to drive a mile, like, operating cost per mile of the Tesla is way cheaper than an ICE car. And so I think that is a is another big thing that's a misconception about Tesla is like, oh, it's such an expensive car. Well, when you actually do the total cost of ownership calculation, then, you know, these ICE cars get a lot more expensive quickly because of oil changes, get the refuel cost per mile, and then maintenance. Like this actually is really adding up. You factor in that Tesla's might start giving me their insurance, which is way cheaper to insure than any other ICE car as well. There's a lot of under the hood savings that make a Tesla um, a lot less expensive than it seems when you factor in like, this whole life cycle of the vehicle yeah and i think you know it, it's interesting because for all the ice cars like after that three years thirty six thousand miles forty thousand miles yeah you have all this depreciation but if you were to buy a used car like that that's when you're starting to have to replace a bunch of these parts usually like an ice car to make it worthwhile to just not even lease you got to own it for five six seven eight years and it's getting worse every day whereas Tesla, I could own this for five years and it gets better. Yeah. As I'm owning it. So. All right. We're doing it. We're going into the Tesla world. Here's the website. I feel like the fact that they just put the Model Y on the main page of the website is a sign. This is a sign. It's looking but so it crispy. It used to be like SX3Y, like sexy lineup. All right. We're doing it. Custom order. No time to wait. Ooh, how does it already know I want black? May have, may have, sa may have saved. <laughs> the cookies. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. All right, so I'm going long range. Now, I've thought about this a lot. Performance, serious decrease to range, and you get these wheels. And honestly, I was dead set on the performance because I was like, bro, if I'm getting all this money on the car, I want the flashy red brake with the dope rims, you know, big rims, 21s. I don't want to be showing up at the, with the 20s and somebody got the 21s. <laughs> no, but then I was talking to my friends and like, I don't know, it just seemed unpractical to get the performance. You're taking the range hit, which I don't like. You're paying more money and the tires can like, are easier to break, more expensive to replace, not as good for off-roading. I don't know, I'm trying to road trip, travel, do it all in my car. So I went with long range, although I, as you can tell, having major complications and hesitations about the lack of flexing that could, could be going on. We'll go next. Ooh. So Tesla, they keep it really simple with the paint. 
you can get your own, uh, you know, you can do one of their colors and you can do a lot of people get wrapped. I'm definitely doing a wrap. Um, or you can, you know, get your custom paint. Of course I'm, this is actually the hardest part of my decision. Okay. Do I get the red? Because I'm not getting the performance wheels. I'm trying to flashy. We got the Tesla red. I don't know. The Tesla red pops, but is it like, am I trying too hard with the model Y with the red? Like, is that trying too hard? Oh, and I'll, let me just switch this. so You guys can see what it looks like. Cause with the wheels, bro. I mean, that pretty, looks pretty sick. Savage. That looks savage. Okay, so I'm gonna either go for red or black. Red, black's the, a thousand. The interesting thing is like the Model Y. I mean, it it is a sporty car. I feel like red, red just goes nicer with their sedans. It does. It looks a little like I'm trying too hard, but it's so dope. But the hyper ship with black with like a nice stealthy colored wrap because you can put the wraps on it and like add like a little tint, a little flare. I don't know. We're taking two. People are going to be getting bored. I don't know. What are we going to do? <sighs> That's silver, though. All right. Gonna I'm going to go red. I'm, I'm going red. <laughs> Julian's getting silver. There's also a whole underlying theme here of Julian has been FOMO'd into getting a Model Y because I'm doing this, and he's on the fence. So by the time you're watching this, there's like a 90% chance he's already ordered his Model Y. But if you could please leave in the comments any sort of comments to make J Julian have like major FOMO about not getting a Model Y, that would be excellent. Um, all right, Julian's probably gonna get white or gray, so that means I'm red or black. Um, let's just do red. All right, I'm deciding it. No toe hitch. Whew, okay. Man. T minus two minutes. Interior. Five seat interior. Black, white, thousand dollars more. Nah, we'll go with black, we'll go with black. 61. Full self-driving. Bro. How am I not getting full self-driving? This is, so let's see what they, what it's, what, what they says, uh, or what it says. Navigate on autopilot, automatic driving from highway on-ramp to highway off-ramp, including interchanges and overtaking slower cars. That is next level. Auto lane change, I call it the robo lane change. That is epic. The auto park, since I can't park, that'll be huge. Summon, auto steer on city streets. So this is what you were trying to talk about. They're reading the speed limits, the stop signs. My theory is when this drops, they're gonna start raising FSD by a lot more than like one G every quarter or one G every two quarters. Yeah. It's gonna start getting way above 10,000 quickly. And I think we're at this really weird inflection point where that rewrite that Elon's been hyping, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it's kind of lumpy progress in autopilot. And I think Elon, you know, as much as he kind of over promises and under delivers with autopilot, like, and it always seems to take a little longer, like, I don't know, I just feel like this rewrite, the functionality, I've been seeing it already get better before the rewrite, like, this progress that they're happening is at such a fast pace that this to me is like 50%, like A, I wanna just make videos for you guys about full self-driving, but B, like I actually think this is the part, Julian, where you're like, could this be a savage investment? This whole full self-driving software option that's attached to the car that keeps updating over time, you're buying a perpetual license to Tesla's autopilot software. I just bought the right to Tesla's autopilot software in 2030. You know how good that's gonna be in 2030? Like, this is almost like a bet on, you know, th they say like the great ideas, the, the big things, like what do you believe that no one else believes right now? I think that's always a good question to ask yourself. But if I had to do believe one thing that I would say the world doesn't believe and Tesla doesn't even raise their prices because they're not even ready, they know the world's not ready to believe this, is that this FSD option is worth 15 to 20 grand today and that it's really gonna be worth 50 grand or so, you know, a year from now as this gets close to autonomy, and then in two years from now, when we're at full autonomy, whenever that is, maybe three years, this is basically a 100K feature. And I think Tesla knows this, a lot of people, like at Tesla, they know and believe this, but they just can't crank out the pricing until city streets gets good. But the second, you know, Elon Musk that's is- like, on, That's on the cusp. But that's on the cusp. And so Elon Musk is literally driving his Tesla from work to home, and with almost zero interventions, like, it's this, it, this, the cat's gonna be out of the bag. Like battery day is dope, but the second everybody is driving to work or to In-N-Out or to Taco Bell or to Starbucks or, you know, wherever on autopilot, on full self-driving, um, and even though it's like, yeah, you have to kind of be behind the steering wheel and yeah, you have to, you know, intervene every now and then, everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, the Tesla basically drives itself. And then I think that will give Tesla the leeway to start raising these prices. That will create even way more hype around the company itself um, and around just this autopilot software feature, which I think is the most biggest, like, like, 
hyper change news stories, hyper change projects under development, the fleet wide testing of an autopilot software around millions of cars. Um, you know, this is, there's nothing else that even comes close. So of course I'm getting FSD with that rant. Now I got to enter in the details. All right, before we do it for folks, this is what it's looking like. The final is model Y long range, dual motor, all wheel drive, red coat, multi-paint, 20 inch induction, all black premium interior, five seat, uh, instead of seven autopilot FSD. Woo. All right. I'm gonna enter in the payment. I'll see y'all in a sec. Boom. That's it. I did it. Model Y, bro. Let's go. Julian whipping out his credit card. Just the FOMO hit. Julian is literally ordering one as fast as possible. Now that I've ordered one, <laughs> literally, bro. I'm popping the champagne, bro. <laughs> this is. Julian abandoned me halfway through <laughs> to go order his Tesla. <laughs> Bro, the fact that they still have this hedgehog as like the meme is just ridiculous. Like, I love Tesla. And it's like, what am I doing? I ordered, it felt like I ordered like a, a new t shirt online or something. Like, I guess I only paid $100, but I don't know. It feels real. It feels like I got a Tesla. The hyper ship has been ordered. Um, oh, one thing I, I, I'm really curious is I want to know like all your ideas for what sort of product should we get for the Tesla? Like what, I wanna get like the best Tesla bed. I wanna get some cool glow lights for some mood lighting, you know, like some cool like under green lights, like puddle lights, I don't know. I kinda wanna trick my Tesla out and make it like the hyper ship, like really, really cool. So if you have any ideas of what Tesla products I should get for my Tesla, like the essentials, like I know flo people get floor mats, I guess that's a thing. Um, did you just screenshot it? Got the hedgehog. Bro, let's go. We even got our Elon Musk. Like, is there a better mug to celebrate with, bro? <laughs> For the record, have not decided whether or not I'm taking chips off the table. Oh, you're, you might, so Julian might not have to sell Tesla. I'm gonna have to, I guess this confirms that by the time you're watching this, I'll have probably had to sell some Tesla stock. So hopefully it goes up tomorrow. <laughs> Bro, are you ready for this? We got the Bella Vista because we're going to be seeing a lot of Bella Vistas in our new Model Ys. Don't, don't. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm trying not to hit my camera. Or ruin your laptop. <laughs> All right, you ready, bro? <laughs> bro, what the f Look at Julian's mug, also pretty sick. Lots of Tesla folklore on the mugs. <laughs> Cheers, homie. Woo! We got Teslas. Still doesn't feel real. It still doesn't feel real. So, whew, overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed with emotions. I, I, you know, I build myself up and we're gonna drop all this, my life savings on this, on this car. I, then I ended up spending a hundred bucks. I got the hedgehog. <laughs> I guess now I'm waiting. This is the hardest part. Nobody told me about this part. No, I'm just like, I don't got my Tesla, but I, I think I got, I feel like I got, I got a test. I don't know. Like, do I, can I talk about it yet? <laughs> Bro. I'm, what I'm so happy is like, I gotta give a shout out to Matt Joyce, one of our, Matty Vogel, it's like he has a Tesla um, and he has like a 2018 Model 3 and whenever we hang out with him and he's, he'll like, dr we'll drive around in his Tesla, like every time we walk by his Tesla, it just brought like Joy. the biggest smile to my face. Of Pretty just like- to other people too. Like, in the yeah. of Wisconsin. Dude, yeah, like we were in Wisconsin and like everybody knew what it was. I live in New York, so I don't have a car historically. Now I'm in COVID. I'm running around who knows where. That's part of the reason I got this Tesla because my whole life has changed because of this. But it, my eyes were open to like, wow, this is a revolution that happens. Every time you drive, people want to talk to you about it. They're curious. Ooh, that's the new computer that drives itself. That's the new Tesla. Like, but I'll, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. You just, it brings a smile to my face. Like every time I see it, you know, 
the, the, the most exciting thing I'm, I'm pumped about to do with my Tesla is like go travel, explore, like freedom. You know, that's kind of been one of the mottos. Tesla sells freedom. That's part of why I'm like so like amped up. I'm like, where are we going? Like, I got to plan my first trip using no emissions to go into nature. That's something that I've always felt super guilty about. And why I love walking everywhere as a New Yorker and even in Seattle, wherever, whenever I can, because no emissions, you don't feel guilty. Like the Tesla is like guilt-free freedom. Like I can go to the woods. I don't have to hear my loud engine. Doesn't have to smell gross. Like every time I look at the Tesla, I smile knowing I made a purchase with nature in mind, thinking about the planet, thinking holistically about my other humans and other citizens and not polluting to ruin the planet for us. Like I'm, I'm putting, you know, a massive amount of money down for this product, but it's not like that money's going to waste. That money's going into Tesla, this crazy system that, like I've said, every dollar you spend into Tesla is a torpedo at the fossil fuel industrial complex. We're pushing green energy forward. Yeah, I just bought a Model Y. It's going to pay for all the computers, electronics in the Model Y. A sliver of that is also going to pay for R&D for Tesla to come up with the next generation battery. They're, they're going to put out at Battery Investor Day. That's going to make their electric vehicle even better. That's going to mean even more people can buy it. Like I'm really contributing um, to this whole vision and mission. Um, and I like actually feel like as much as being a shareholder really made me feel like a part of the revolution to just be in my Tesla. I've never bought a car in my life. Like I feel like I'm part of the new generation. I'm never buying a fossil fuel car. My first car is electric. I'm never looking back. Like this is the type of new mindset we need if we're going to switch over the whole energy system. And so it's surreal. Like I, I always knew I was going to have a Tesla, but I thought it would be like, way further down the road, honestly. And like, I thought it was gonna be like the Roadster SpaceX package. I'm still gonna get that one. But like, you know, uh, it's just this idea of like, you know, the why behind Tesla. And I don't know if it's like, people might think that's corny. I, I really, really think about that. And I think that's where the world's headed. And I think it's just a bet on education as people become more educated about what what's happening in the planet, where it's going, how much buying a Tesla not only helps your personal emissions, but helps the emissions and hope and chance of the, of the planet by advancing the whole technology forward is really a holistic sort of understanding of, of the situation that I think a lot more people need to have. And I just think, Oh, there's a million Teslas on the road. Like soon there's going to be tens of millions. This is just such a, uh, you know, I feel like we're right at the moment of Tesla just going absolutely mainstream. Julian and I getting Teslas is like is just so symbolic mainstream? of that moment. You know, these crazy millennials. I'm happy for you that it's like, it's completing the circle of really being a part of the revolution. Like you're on the forefront covering the company, being a, an investor, and now you get to you know, as consumers, we have the choice about where to put our dollars. What's a good company that we want to support? I think that's one way that you can kind of move move the ball forward as a consumer. Yeah, and I think we feel a lot of like hands time hard our back, like, you know, voting, politics, it just makes a lot of us feel powerless in some ways. And so to me, this is a really direct way to support the vision, myth, mission, ethics, and sort of everything that I really support in life by choosing which products I purchase. And Tesla, like, and, and the reason why I think we're talking about the psychology a lot is because I think this is what people have such a hard time understanding about Tesla is like, what makes it so different? Like, why can't GM just come out with a car? Because I don't feel like GM is on my side to change the world. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't feel like Mary Barra is going to come up with a cyber truck if I give her more R&D budget. Elon Musk is. Not even about that, though. It's like Elon, his money goes further than Tesla like goes into colonizing Mars, create the Neuralink. I think we're supporting all of it. And that's actually a big reason why I didn't, like I have to sell my Tesla is because I use all my extra money to buy SpaceX. And so now I'm like, and I can't sell my SpaceX. So man, it's, I've, and that we can, we can talk about this, like the bittersweet moment of an investor. Like I am not thinking twice about it. It sucks. I'm holding on to every single one of my shares. It like, the, it kills me to sell my Tesla stock. There's not anything in the world that can make me sell my Tesla stock besides like needing the money for like some medical condition or that's the only way I could buy a Tesla. And so we've come to that road. You know, my Twitter bio, I had to remove it because now I'm gonna sell a little bit of shares to just be able to afford this. But like the hodling to two trillion, like I just deep down in the bottom of my heart believe this is a multi-trillion dollar company that is just at the start of like the most exciting decade in business. Uh, one of the craziest case studies, Tesla going profitable, the start of changing the world. Like I, the more and more I thought about, okay, I'm selling at a $450 billion valuation. I'm not trying to make this too much about the stocks or finance because I just need the money to buy my car. But like, honestly, like, do I really want to part ways with my shares at this price? No, is what I really came down to. Today, Tesla's business is probably at a $35, $40 billion run rate or the second they drop the Plaid Model S and X, if they do, 
um, and refresh those cars, I think Tesla's over a $40 billion revenue run rate. So you're basically paying about 10 times the current sales of what I would call the world's most exciting company that has massive growth ahead, that's really sells computers on wheels, not cars. You know, you think about their operating margin already being higher than Shopify's for five quarters in a row. Is this really that unprofitable and shitty of a business? Maybe they should be worth 10 times sales. Um, and so if you think about that and you think about their sales compounding at 50% for the next four years, then a 10 times price sales fair value compounding at 50% over the next four years, we're going to be looking at a $2 trillion company in 2023, 2024. Like, do I think that could happen? Yeah. Am I freaking out about it? Yeah. Like, you know, I, it, I don't know. It's, this, it's this is just like the process of like, me being the super long-term investor, never wanting to sell a Tesla share. And it's just like, this is the part of it that sucks. Yeah, but it's also like your trade, you know, at, in the grand scheme of things, it's 10% of your position. And now you get to really be at the forefront of the evolution. It's like, it's not evolution, revolution. Yeah. And honestly, one of my like mottos in life is spend money on experiences, you know? What is my Tesla gonna get me? It's gonna get me amazing memories, exploring all these new places, having so much fun with all my friends, camping, new experiences, traveling, exploring new places. Like those are priceless memories that I wouldn't have had without my Tesla. So to me, that's really what I'm buying. I'm not buying a car. I'm buying all of these future memories. It's really just happiness and like a lifestyle as much corny as that is, but that is really what I'm buying and why I'm so excited about this product. But my life's path just like kind of swerved to a different way where now I have all these amazing experiences. Like I'm art, I never go camping or hiking. Like I'm not that into it, but I'm already, maybe I'm getting too excited. I'm not gonna be that Tesla camping guy. I'm just thinking I'm gonna be that Tesla camp, but I'm like, huh? Definitely the first day I get my Tesla, like I'm, we're going on a crazy hike outside in nature. Like I'm going to test auto, you know, Tesla sells products to maximize happiness. What other car company or product on the planet could get me to spend this much money and be this pumped about it? Manet. Manet. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Manet and your Tesla. What else do you need though? Like, yeah. Oh, I also wanted to show you, this is a sneak peek of the, uh, doing some, you know, hardcore beta testing of the new Hyperchange pins. And so sneak peek there with the new logo, we're testing out some pins in case people were wondering. Thanks for uh, giving me one. Glad I could have that on too. <laughs> All the reasons why everyone in your life is like, don't get a car, don't do this. What about parking, insurance, charging, this? <laughs> it's like, everybody's got it. Bro. Like, it's, you get the scratch on bro, Like the bigger the purchase, like the more excuses people are coming up with. Nothing outweighs the fun. Like, are you living your life for what could go wrong or for what could go right? You know what I mean? It's YOLO, dude, like as lame as it is, it's like, that's what I thought. So am I gonna be, you know, I'm 27 right now. I'm gonna be 29 when I get my Cybertruck and just not have had a Tesla for the past two years. Yeah. I'm never gonna be this age again. Why don't I, you know what I mean? Like I have a, like, I, I also just wanted to say thank you, honestly, because I feel like this is a, there's no way this happens without the hyper changers, without my homies, Jay Filchi. It's just a crazy like moment to actually be able to buy my Tesla. And so seriously, like, Huge thank you to everyone who watched the channel, every little micro penny of ad revenue you helped me get. Um, and like, seriously, to all of our Patreons, like the biggest thank you for believing in the channel and everything. And like, I've been putting a lot of work into better quality, a lot of behind the scenes schemes that are gonna come out soon to make the channel way better. Um, and I just think like, I'm, I'm just so, so pumped that you guys have stayed along the journey. Like it means so much. And what I'm most excited about is how your support is allowing me to evolve with the hypership, kind of take you along this journey and document it. And none of it would have been possible at all without my Patreons, without my viewers and people who were kind of believed in hyperchange because there was no way I could have afforded a Tesla or done any of this without you guys. So I feel like I'm living the dream. I get to talk about Tesla, analyze the company all day, like, you know, so I, I really just have the biggest thank you for, for the community. And I want to like give back by sharing my experience with you guys and taking you on this journey. And like, that's really why I came down, you know, thought about the end of the day. I got to do this for my subscribers. What's the future of hyperchange look like? How am I not doing my podcast in a Tesla? How do I not have a Tesla? How am I not watching FSD go from where it is now to full robo taxi? Like this is a priceless moment in history. I can't miss from my favorite company by my favorite entrepreneur, Elon Musk with the community. It's like, it's just too much. It's too perfect. And it's like a little bit overwhelming because you know, like I said at the beginning, like none of the kind of like hyper change things seem real when it's just numbers on a screen going up, but to actually have my hyper ship that I get to look at every time I step outside and I get to drive in and I get to pick people up when there's no COVID. And you know, I, I want to do Tesla talk where we rip around, whip around in my Tesla, I show people what's up and we scheme on Tesla. Like I have so many, so many 
like the amount of ideas I'm getting for creative content to make, to bring to all of you with this new product. Is it just how I know this is the right move for me as a creator to really expand and evolve and like do it with, you know, with my audience in mind. And it's just going to be a crazy win-win for hyperchange. So, you know, that's my, that's my pitch on my two cents of like why I'm so, so excited about this. Cause I feel like it's not even like me getting a Tesla. It's like, all of us are getting a Tesla together. Oh, so many of you Tesla rides in my Tesla, you know, like when COVID's over. And just thank you to the community for being strong and pushing the revolution forward, fighting through the FUD. Yeah, honestly, dude, we got to thank the community because it seems crazy like a year, even just a year ago, how people just did not believe in Tesla and like, honestly, how close to failure this company was at so many times. Like we also got to thank all the Roadster customers, the Model S customers, the Model the 3 Model customers. customers. That's what's so cool about Tesla is it's such a grassroots, like Wall Street didn't believe in them. That, you know, it's the most David versus Goliath thing you could have ever imagined. Uh, you know, startup company in California, buying this old factory in the highest cost place, bringing jobs back to the US, you know, bringing exciting technology back to the US, doing something nobody thought was possible, starting this car company, like to actually watch it succeed. Um, we're literally watching history unfold before our eyes. Like I get, who, who's watching a business documentary these days when you could just study Tesla? This is the best movie of real time and you can buy the product. We got to do this now, bro. I was telling Julian, like, are we just gonna, am I just gonna end up selling all my Tesla stock and getting the Plaid Model S at battery day if we didn't do, if we don't do this? Like, it's get way too much fun. It's been building up. Like, we got to make this move. Little mama, I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> and and the <laughs> Julian, what are you most excited about for to get a Tesla? I think it's just full circle on the investment. Like, I've never won this big on an investment. So I think it's just nice to have full circle from that aspect. You know, you alluded to it. It's just like about being on the front lines of FSD. Like every time I see a new video, people on Twitter are tweeting about like, Ooh, 36 update is dropping. Like everyone's fiending, waiting for it. It's right? Like, I'm not even I want to be a part of that. I'm like, I got too much FOMO, dude. Like, why am I even going to watch? I can't <laughs> test it. Just being salty yeah. that everyone else is like in their Tesla. I'm and not. I've, I've I'm always, out here just making videos about Tesla. Yeah. I don't even have one. Like, just come on. Like, I've always. We didn't plan on this. Like, we're like, Julian and I have been to the shareholder meeting four years in a row, or this would be our fourth year if it was like an open and we could have gone 2016 or we went 2017, 2018, 2019, like in our hyper chain shirts, like every single year going to the shareholder meeting, like not even having a Tesla's worth of Tesla stock when we started, like we barely had anything. We're showing up. Nobody even goes to the shareholder meeting back. We actually, well, actually a lot, a good amount of people do. Um, like we got stuck in the waiting room, the first share, yeah. we vlogged the whole thing on Hyperchange. You can watch it. And we got stuck in the waiting room because we were too late. The next year we showed up like as early as possible to make sure we got like right in. Um, yeah. Then we were in the third row the next year. That's a low key Forgot fun fact. Remember. Julian was in the third <laughs> row. Nobody even knows that. To be these like little fans and like never dreamed that we would have a Tesla, but then just like putting our, like at least for me, it felt like putting my head down and working and just like doing this like super disciplined warren buffett peter lynch buy the product yeah i didn't know the tesla product but like i always wanted one it was my dream car and it was like the second the rivian's my dream car instead of the tesla like i'm not going to be obsessed with tesla stock but you know so i've always just been so so obsessed with this being my dream product it's just it blows my mind to think that like yeah. now our investment has gone up so much that i had this like epiphany the other day it was like i think i can just actually get a tesla and it would have never even crossed my mind and it took me like 48 hours of just intense de deliberation of like me parting ways with my Tesla stock, literally heartbreaking, basically going through a breakup over here, like listening to Drake the weekend, like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Just like getting real sentimental, like, yeah. you know, like just like printing out my Vanguard statements, like burning them. Like it's like <laughs> a new era has begun. The hyper ship has been ordered. Julian got phoned into ordering his Tesla. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. We're like, on the moon right now, I'm gonna have it so, like, I'm documenting this process. Like, we're gonna be keeping everybody up to date when I'm getting my Tesla, order delivery, first ride, test drive. I, I, I'm trying to. Have we driven a Y? No, nah, I've never even driven a Y. I've never even <laughs> driven the car. We never did. <laughs> so much. Anyway, we gotta end it by saying huge, again, even though I already said it, one gazillion thank yous to all the viewers and especially the Patreons of HyperChange for making this possible. The new chapter's begun. This is the video. It's going to be so epic. I'm so excited. 
and like seriously a heartfelt thank you heartfelt thank you to jay filchi all the hyper change homies giving me advice vincent with the tweet today being like bro you gotta order it I, it's like dude you know i'm like to, then talking to jay filchi like getting our coffees and i'm like oh man like they already know, Twitter knows, all the due diligence, all the battery day schemes. Like, am I gonna have to just, I'm gonna get so like, I'm just gonna have to rip open the battery pack to see what's good before battery day. <laughs> so if you call Sandy, get him over here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and oh, this is what last thing, I need Rex. How can I make the Hypership the coolest Tesla on the road? I know it's bad news, it's gonna be cooler than your Tesla. How, what products can I get? How can I just maximize this and make this the coolest Tesla? I would love to know all your ideas. Um, everything you got, tips, secrets, trades from all of you Tesla owners. I'm so pumped to join the community of people who actually own Teslas. Get in the club, like can't wait to see y'all on the other side. Jay Filchi, thanks for joining me. This has been epic, bro. One to remember for the books, a piece of history. Cheers, folks. We'll be back with our Model Ys. See you next time. Peace.